Before we talk about subdata sheets, let's quickly go over or do a review of what data sheets are. As you recall in an earlier training video, there are only two objects in Access that have data sheets, and they are your tables and your queries. Now by default, when you open up either one, it goes to the data sheet view. You have a sheet that contains your data that you can edit or add additional records to. And you can see there's the customer's table that I have open. And how do you know it's a table? Well, by that little icon. And how do you know you're in the data sheet view? By what you see up here on the home tab in the views group as its opposite. Meaning that if you want to go to another view, like the design view that has a pencil and ruler, when you click on it, it flips it over. Now it flips back to the data sheet view with the data sheet icon. So that means you're not in it. It means if you want to view it, then you got to click on it. So you can see there's the design, click on view, and we go back to the data sheet view. And the same with our queries, double click. Default opens up in the data sheet view, and then you get the design button, click on it. Different design than your tables, and then to go back to the data sheet view of the query, click on it, and we're back. Let's go ahead and close out of the query here. Now that you know what data sheets are, you can actually have what are called sub-data sheets. And the definition is that they are data sheets nested within data sheets or like tables within tables, but that are related and can be expanded to review related data. Now, I don't know if you notice this, but when I open up my customer's table, I get these little plus signs here. That means that if I click on any one of these, it's going to open up and find the related table. Actually, not find. There actually is a related table to the customer table, but which one is it? Or how many related tables do I have to the customer's table? Well, let's find out. Let's click on this one and it opens up a related table. And this isn't the only table, but we'll go over that in just a minute. But it picks one of them, and this one is the, let's see, order ID is the label for this column, order date. I'm thinking it's the orders table, because in there, when you double click, you have the order ID, the order date, and so on. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And so what's cool about this is that if a customer calls in like Happy Town Play World, and I'm already in their subdata sheet for the orders that they made, and they want to make a new order, well, I can just come down here. By default, we've got the order date. I can change that. Type in the item number, and go ahead and type in the quantity, and save it. Or, if they call back and need to make changes, you can easily come and do that here. Instead of 7, for order ID 22, let's type in 8. Then I can click on the pencil, and it saves it to 8. So, order ID 22, when I open up the orders table, and I scroll down to 22, is it 7? No, it's 8. And vice versa, if I make a change here and I change it back to 7, hold down the shift key and hit enter to save the record, and I close out of here, is it, oh, it went back to 7. So what you do in one affects the other, vice versa, because it's related. And of course, you can come down here and expand additional ones for like Roofit, and they got quite a few orders there, cool. And instead of opening up each one at a time, if you want to expand all of them at one time, then come up here on the Home tab, go to the Records group, click on More, go down to Subdata Sheet, and well, we don't get the option to expand all of them. And the reason being is because our Subdata Sheets don't have Subdata Sheets. You could, but, well, not what we're doing here. We're keeping it simple. And so what I need to do is if I want to expand all of them, I just have to go ahead and click out of one of these subdata sheets into the main data sheet, any record in the main data sheet, and then come back up here and say more, subdata sheet to expand all. And there you go. And then, of course, to collapse them all, make sure you're within the main data sheet, one of the records there, and then back up here more to subdata sheet to go ahead and collapse. Now, in order for this to work, because by default, Access will automatically or should automatically pull this in, a related table, well, the key word is that it has to be related. So the customer table is related to the orders table. And if you recall in an earlier training video, when you come up here and click on the Database Tools tab, go to the Relationships group and click on Relationships. Hey, there we go. Our customer's table is related to the orders table, and it's a one-to-many, as opposed to the one-to-one -one relationship with our billing information. So when it comes to contacting our customers and bill them, I just want to talk to one person and not many. Somebody who takes care of all their billing that we can go ahead and get them to pay up through that one person and not many. So we got the one-to-one. -one. Now, if I want to go ahead and go back to my data sheet for the customer's table and say, no, 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 no. I don't want it to go to the orders table. I want it to go to the billing info table. That's who I want to see as a subdata sheet. Okay, to do that, let's go ahead and close out of here come back here, 
And we already have a subdata sheet related. Well, if you want to remove it, then just go ahead and come up here, click on more, go down to subdata sheet and remove. And also, if you open up your table and you don't see the plus signs, but you know that you have your tables related, well, just do what I'm doing here and you'll be able to hook up to the right table. But again, make sure it's related. So the only two tables that are related are the orders and the billing info. So we're going to hook up to the billing info here instead of the default orders. And to do that, let's come back up here, click on more, go down to subdata sheet, and say we want to insert a subdata sheet. Now you can have subdata sheets based upon tables, queries, and we just have one, or both, and it lists, well, both tables and queries. But let's keep it simple and focus on the tables. And then down below, you have the fields that you link to in order to be able to identify the primary key to the foreign key field so you can link the tables and have the, well, in the main data sheet, the subdata sheet or the related table pull up as the subdata sheet. And so here, if I want to be able to have it related to the billing info, then I need to select that because if I don't have it selected, then I'm not going to get what I want down here. It may be something else like orders. So the master field is the table that I'm currently in that I want to link up the child as a subdata sheet into the main table. And so when I click on the drop down arrow, I got the customer ID, right? But that's for the orders table. If I want to link it to the orders table and pull the orders table in as a subdata sheet, don't want to do that. Want to do it for the billing info and then click on the master and you get a list of all the fields. But I want to do it based upon the primary key and the foreign key field so I can have it relate and link just right here. You got the other fields you can link to if there is another field that's named differently. And that's why I have my foreign key fields. So that's the primary key field in my table here, the main table. The foreign key field again named the same name as the primary key. Because if not, and I go to the billing info and I'm trying to find the customer ID foreign key field that has the same data type and type of data as the primary key field in the customers table. Unless you can remember, that's going to be hard, but that's easy, right? Customer ID to customer ID. So it's that simple. Click okie dokie and we're done. So when I go ahead and click on one of these plus signs, it pulls up the information as a subdata sheet from the billing info table to the main table here, the customers table. And what's interesting is that you get a plus sign to that. And why? Because it's a one-to-one -one relationship, it keeps going back and forth. So for like Ghost Hunters America, the customer name, we bill Brett Maroon over at Ghost Hunters America, and we contact this person. But when I click to expand that, it says that this person is the contact person over at the customer name here, Ghost Hunters America, and the contact person for Ghost Hunters is Brett, and Brett is the contact person at Ghost Hunters America, and it just goes on and on and on. And so I'm glad it had that one to many relationship as the default, unless I want to change it, as I just showed you how you can do it here. In any case, if you want to go ahead and close out of this, just keep in mind wherever the cursor's at, and I say close, meaning that maybe you want to collapse this. I mean, you can do it manually here by clicking on this little minus sign. But wherever you're at here, and you come up here to the more, and you say subdata sheet, and you want to collapse, it just collapses everything from that point below. So if you want to collapse everything, well, all the subdata sheets within the main data sheet, then you got to get into the main data sheet, just any one of these records, it doesn't matter. And then come up here and click more, go to subdata sheet, and say you want to collapse all, and we're back to where we started. Now we're in the customers table. Let me go ahead and close out of here and we won't save the layout, we'll just say no. So when I double click and open up the customers table and I expand it, it goes back to the default, which was the orders table, instead of me changing and saying, no, let's go ahead and link up as a subdata sheet to the billing info. So keep that in mind that if you want to save the layout, then in our case, it was the most recent link that we connected with, which was the billing info table. Now, having said that, let's go to the orders table, double click, now in the orders table, I don't get a plus sign. And why is that? Because in a relationship of one to many, it doesn't go backwards from many to one and give you a plus sign to expand it. It's not going to list it. Just think of it in a one to many relationship that one comes first or one way viewing to many, but never many back to one. But nevertheless, you can go ahead and do it and it will insert it. It's just not done by default in a one to many relationship where the many relationship, in this case, the order table, will list it. 
So if you want to force it, because by default it's not showing it, a subdata sheet back to the one relationship in this one to many relationship, that is from the orders to the customers. And then go ahead and click anywhere within here, of course, and come up here, click on more, go down to subdata sheet, to subdata sheet, and we want to go to the customers. And now the name of the primary key field here, the master field, is always going to be the current table that you're in or a query. And so the primary key field, customer ID, perfect. And then the link child field or the customer table, the subdata sheet that we want to insert or the data sheet as a subdata sheet into the main data sheet is also customer ID. I mean, Access is going to find it and default it for you unless, of course, you want to change it, but I'm not going to do that and mess with it. So I don't have to click on the drop down arrows and find it unless, of course, you have it listed under a different name, in which case it should still find the same data type or type of data and be able to pull it up. But it just makes it easier for me to go, oh, customer ID to customer ID, the primary key to the foreign key field in the customer's table. Click okie dokie. And let's go ahead and expand it to find out who made the order, order ID 5, and it was Ghost Hunters America. Then I can expand that and find out that Ghost Hunters America had not only this order that they made, order ID number 5 on this date, but, well, there it is, number 5, but one before that, order number 4, and all the rest of the orders. And then, of course, you can expand that, and it just goes in a never-ending loop. So let's go ahead and click out of that and come up here and do something more, which is going to be sub data sheet to remove to get us back to something less, where we have no sub data sheet in the orders. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.